Hey guys, Brian here from Great Lakes Backpacker and today I want to do a follow-up to a video I did previously regarding alcohol uh, backpacking stoves. More specifically what I want to do is a side-by-side -side comparison burn test with the three stoves that I currently have and just show you why I think the one is superior to the other two, at least in my opinion. So let's go grab the stoves and we'll get started. Okay, maybe you're wondering why I'm standing out here in my garage with my winter coat on. Uh, the reason for that obviously is it's really cold. Last night the low was 8 to 10 degrees and the wind chill was about uh, 10 below. And uh, to make the test even a bit more lopsided, what I intend to do is leave my alcohol stove uh, outside in the cold all night with the alcohol. Uh, hopefully just to show you guys uh, how well this thing performs even when it's really cold. So let's go grab the stove. Okay, so as you can see, I left a uh, cook pot, the stove, and the alcohol out here all night. And like I said, the uh, low overnight was about 10 below with the wind chill. So let's grab this stuff. It should be nice and cold, and we'll go run our test. Okay, so like I said, this should be kind of an unfair advantage because the other alcohol stove pot and the alcohol itself were left outside overnight in the cold temperatures, while this stuff here, these cook pots and the two alcohol stoves that we're going to use for the comparison were left inside. So these are easily room temperature and uh, we'll see how they fare. All right, so first of all, what we're going to do here is we're going to get some uh, water and put it in the pots and then we're going to take it outside. So I'm going to start off with uh, water right from the tap and we'll see if we can get at least a reading on this. It looks like the temperature is about 53 degrees and dropping, so this is definitely some cold water coming from the tap. So we'll get two cups of water, like you would if you were out on a backpacking trip getting ready to rehydrate some food, and uh, we'll give it a shot. So I'm just going to add two cups of water to each one, and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're going to start this test off. I'm going to pour 20 milliliters of alcohol into each of the stoves just so we have an equal amount in each of them. And on the penny alcohol stove, I saw instructions that mentioned building this little contraption down here. And what you can do with this is you can actually put a few drops of alcohol in here. And then you light that on fire to start heating the stove and the alcohol in there so that it vaporizes quicker. Uh, and supposedly it's supposed to help it uh, bloom and take off quicker in cooler weather. So now that we've got all the alcohol in here, uh, we'll just put the penny on top and then we'll start. Okay, one penny on top. All right, let's see if we can get these going. All right, that one's going. Doesn't look very good. Normally with the penny alcohol stove, it takes uh, anywhere from 30 to seconds to a minute for it to bloom, which basically just means that there's uh, flames coming out of the jets. That one just needed a little bit more alcohol. I hadn't gotten sucked up yet. And one more here. We'll get the cap can going. All right. We've got a flame here. We'll put the pot on. This one's got a nice flame going. We'll put the pot on here. And actually, it looks like that penny stove has already burned out. 
just to see if we can get it going. I'll put a little bit more in there. We'll see if we can get it lit. There we go. We'll see if it stays lit this time. And we're off. And for the penny alcohol stove, normally when you hear it making that kind of a noise and you can kind of see some flames coming out of the jets, which you guys really can't see from this angle, um, then it's normally okay to put the pot on. Actually, it looks like it just blew out again. Yep, it did. So I guess we'll just discount that one right off the bat. We're about a minute and 30 seconds into this test. And as you can tell, We've still got a decent flame going there on the stove with the carbon felt in it. And it looks like the stove right here, the cat food can with no carbon felt. Um, I don't see any flames coming out of that one. Actually, it doesn't even feel very warm. So that one may have already gone out as well. So we'll let it go here and we'll see what happens. All right, looking at the uh, stopwatch here, it now looks like we're about three minutes and 15 seconds. And we've still got a strong burn going on the stove in the middle there. And again, there's nothing here on this one on the end on the left. Actually, looking at that stove, that one has burned out as well. Okay, since those two alcohol stoves on the end burned out rather quickly and the one in the middle is still going, we'll just let it continue to burn until all the alcohol is gone. Typically when I use that alcohol stove in the middle, I use about 30 milliliters of alcohol, which I believe is just about an ounce. Uh, and that appears to be fairly typical for some of these alcohol stoves, especially depending on how much water you want to boil. So it looks like that flame is actually starting to thin out a little bit now so it's probably close to being done um, so we'll just let it finish out as you can tell there's some steam coming off the water and some uh, bubbles forming in there however I don't think that's enough to actually get it to a full rolling boil with the uh, flame that's left All right, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but that thing is almost out completely. So let me just grab it here and pull it off. You can see there's still a little bit of residual flame left, but for all intents and purposes, that thing is pretty much done. So we'll just call it an end to this uh, test here. And we'll let the stuff cool down, we'll bring everything inside, and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so we're back inside now. It's a little warmer in here than it was outside and in the garage. So we'll just recap what we uh, saw on the video. We'll start off with the first one here, the penny alcohol stove. Um, like I said, this little contraption, you're supposed to be able to put some alcohol in here to start a flame underneath here to help warm the alcohol and vaporize it easier so it burns better, especially in cooler conditions. Even though this one started up, it didn't last very long and burned out right away. I think it was even before I got the pot on it. So I wouldn't count on this in cooler conditions. The second one here, I know this is uh, fairly popular with some of the ultra light uh, long distance hikers, um, but for my purposes here for this test it didn't work very well. Actually uh, in a real world environment I had this on a kayaking trip back in May and temperature was probably 40 or 45 degrees overnight and when I was using this in the morning to boil some water for some hot chocolate. Uh, it bloomed, I put the pot on with the cold water and within about a minute or two uh, it had basically flamed out and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't heat the water. So in cooler conditions this is basically useless, um, at least in my experience. Uh, maybe in warmer conditions uh, this is a great thing to take along with you, but for cooler temperatures probably not so much. And so then we'll move on to the last one here. Uh, the cat food can with the carbon felt. As you saw in the test, this one took a flame right away. It kept burning and as a matter of fact, I let the timer run until this thing flamed out completely and it was about eight minutes and five seconds. So with only 20 milliliters of alcohol, it burned for quite a while. 
and while it didn't get the water to a rolling boil as you were able to tell in the video there were bubbles forming and there was some steam coming off of it and what you didn't see in the video when I turned everything off and went to empty the water uh, I stuck my finger in real quick it was really hot um, like I said it wasn't a rolling boil and I wouldn't count on that to treat water but that's not really an issue with me because I have a water filter that I use for those purposes so if I'm using this strictly just to make some hot chocolate, some coffee, or rehydrate some meals, uh, this worked perfectly well. So overall, I guess this is the winner. So that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more stuff in the future.